the Whitechapel murderer, Jack the Ripper. The early hours of August 31st, 1888, in the Whitechapel district of London, a cart driver discovers a female's body lying on the ground. Multiple constables are alerted, as well as a doctor, and the group finds the woman's throat slashed twice, as well as a mutilated abdomen. The victim is eventually identified as 43-year-old Mary Ann Nichols, a prostitute who had spent her earnings that night on alcohol. An unfortunate and grisly murder in a rough part of London, this at first wasn't especially notable, but her death would come to be widely known as the first victim of the most infamous serial killer of modern history. The press got a hold of the story quickly and linked it to two earlier murders, blaming them all on gang violence. However, the method of killing was starkly different for Nichols, and the Star newspaper suggested it was the work of a single killer. Other newspapers followed suit, and the story spread throughout London. Initially, the investigation was being handled by local detectives, but soon it was brought to the attention of Scotland Yard, who sent three detectives to assist in the case, led by Frederick Aberline. Nine days after Nichols' murder, just before 6 a.m. on September 8th, another body was found in the backyard of a house in Spitalfields. The victim was identified as 47-year-old Annie Chapman, a woman who supplemented her income with casual prostitution. It seems she was first asphyxiated with a handkerchief before having her throat slashed with a very sharp, narrow knife. Following this, she was disemboweled, her intestines being thrown out of her abdomen. A later examination done at the morgue concluded that part of her uterus was missing, although some suspect that the mortuary staff removed this themselves to sell the organ. The doctor on the scene was of the opinion that the killer had surgical knowledge, and perhaps used a surgical blade, but other experts dismissed these claims. Regardless, members of the public, spurred on by the media, began to have a growing fear of doctors and surgeons preying on the poor. The police began interviewing, investigating, and arresting many residents of Whitechapel and surrounding areas, especially butchers, slaughterers, surgeons, and physicians, due to the nature of the killings. Seventy-six butchers and slaughters were investigated, and all their employees were examined as well, but no conclusive results were found. On September 10th, a group of local residents met in a pub and formed the Whitechapel Vigilance Committee a formation of concerned volunteers intending to protect citizens of Whitechapel and apprehend the killer without police assistance. This group was part of a larger perception that grew as the murders continued of the incompetence of the police. The committee was led by a builder named George Lusk, and their activities included petitioning to the government, hiring private detectives, and patrolling the streets of Whitechapel at night. On September 27th, a letter was received by the Central News Agency which was then forwarded to Scotland Yard two days later. Written in red ink, the letter would come to be known as the Dear Boss Letter, and many believe it was written by the killer himself. In the letter, he brags about the last murder he committed and ensures that his killings aren't finished yet. Grand work the last job was. I gave the lady no time to squeal. How can they catch me now? I love my work and want to start again. You will soon hear of me with my funny little games. The next job I do I shall clip the lady's ears off and send to the police officers, just for jolly, wouldn't you? Good luck. Yours truly, Jack the Ripper. This would be the first mention of the name Jack the Ripper, which would become the widely publicized name for the killer known to the world. At first, the letter was believed to be yet another hoax, but in the early morning of September 30th, the body of Catherine Eddowes, age 46, was discovered in the south corner of Mitre Square, with her right earlobe severed. Cause of death was attributed to a slashed throat, with post-mortem mutilations of the abdomen. Her left kidney and part of her uterus had been removed, and her intestines had been spilt across her body. There were also a number of cuts across her face. Due to the similarity to previous murders, the killing was attributed to Jack the Ripper, though there was disagreement among the physicians on whether or not the killer had scientific or anatomic knowledge. 
45 minutes prior to the discovery of Catherine Eddowes' body, and within walking distance, the body of 44-year-old Elizabeth Stride was discovered. Cause of death appeared to be a slash across the throat, likely done while she was pinned to the ground. Unlike previous murders, there was no abdominal mutilation done, although when the body was first discovered, blood was still flowing from the victim's throat. This leads some to believe that the Ripper had only very recently killed Stride, and was forced to flee before he could perform the evisceration. The next day, another letter was received purported to be written by Jack the Ripper. Referring to himself as Saucy Jackie, he calls the murder of Eddowes and Stride a double event, and says he couldn't finish one straight off. Due to the date of postmarking, many believe that the letter was written after events of the two murders are publicly available in newspapers, although some argue that the letter was actually sent before then. By this point, the killings, as well as the published letters, had created a worldwide media frenzy. Mass circulated newspapers, printed very cheaply, allowed nearly everyone a chance to follow the continuing investigation, and put a spotlight on the poverty and rampant crime in areas such as Whitechapel. On the 16th of October, George Lusk of the Whitechapel Vigilance Committee received a letter that would come to be known as the From Hell Letter. Several differences distinguish this letter from the two other ones some believe to be genuine. One is that the author's handwriting and literacy level seem to be noticeably lower than the other letters, misspelling many words and making frequent grammar mistakes. Some, however, believe that this was done on purpose as a form of misdirection. Another difference is the lack of signing the letter as Jack the Ripper, as well as sending it directly to George Lusk, with no mention of the police. A final difference, and perhaps the most notable, is that along with the letter, Lusk received a small box that contained half of a human kidney, the writer of the letter claiming to have eaten the other half. There has been a great amount of disagreement on whether or not the letter was genuine, and still today experts are unclear on the authenticity of any of the letters. Even at the time, it was believed that the kidney could have been acquired by medical students, so even that was thrown into question. Around this time, Police surgeon Thomas Bond was asked to give his thoughts on the killer's knowledge of anatomy and surgical skill. Bond's report is the earliest criminal profile that we know of. Instead of simply trying to track down the individual criminal, criminal profiling instead tries to identify the type of person that would likely commit such crimes. Bond believed the killer had no scientific or anatomic knowledge, not even that of a butcher, and instead was subject to periodic attacks of homicidal mania. Of other note is the fact that the victims were always left in a public place, easily noticeable, and the bodies were displayed in sexually degrading positions. The fifth canonical murder was done on November 9th, and the victim was 25-year-old Mary Jane Kelly. Kelly's wounds were far more extreme than any of the previous victims, likely because the Ripper had more time and privacy to perform them, as she was killed in her own home. Again, the victim was murdered by a cut across the throat, this time, however, the gash went down to the spine. Much of her skin was removed, as well as most of her organs, and her heart was missing. Her face was deeply disfigured, her breasts removed, her arms mutilated, and the bed saturated with blood. Although some believed her boyfriend had killed her in a jealous rage and mutilated her body to make it look like a ripper murder, he was cleared of suspicion. With Kelly's death, thus ends the five canonical murders of Jack the Ripper. Other grisly murders did continue in Whitechapel, though for various reasons they are not often attributed to Jack the Ripper. All told, the police had interviewed more than 2,000 people, investigated close to 300, and arrested 80 of them, but Jack the Ripper was seemingly never caught. Over the years, over 100 suspects have been named as being the Ripper, but none have been conclusively proven. Many think that the killing stopped because the Ripper had been imprisoned for another reason, or died in some manner, or institutionalized for insanity, or perhaps emigrated elsewhere. Regardless, Jack the Ripper is one of, if not the most infamous serial killer in modern history, and will continue to fascinate and horrify people for generations to come.